Hello, my name is Ahmed Aldouri. I'm a concept artist, YouTuber, teacher, working in the concept art and teaching industry. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do material indication for a sci-fi helmet concept in Adobe Photoshop. Let's dive in. For the outline, we're going to be starting with a material ball to apply different material indications like carbon fiber, gloss, and matte surfaces. And then we're going to be blocking out different parts of the helmet sketch and then applying the materials and textures onto that, followed by painting over everything. Okay, time for some material indication on a helmet design. I have some sketches here that I did prior to recording, and I want to concept some material indication on one of the sketches. Specifically, I'm thinking to do some carbon fiber, maybe some glass, metal, and maybe some matte surfaces. So I'm going to go ahead and pick one. Let's take this one. I'm going to put a gray background behind it, but I'm also going to make a copy over here as our testing area. We'll be testing some materials on just a basic sphere. Using the marquee tool, holding shift will make a perfect circle. And a new layer, I'm gonna fill that with any color. Let's do a bluish gray. Cool. To indicate materials, it is kind of important to know where the light is coming from because of reflections or ambient occlusion or shadows. So we're just going to decide that there's gonna be top light from the maybe top left. So I'm going to lock the transparency, select that color, and I want the shadow value, which is going to be in this lighting scenario, halfway to black. So you see this distance here, about halfway to perfect black is going to be our value. I'm also going to change the hue to imply a different colored light for the temperature. Using the airbrush, it's going to put a nice shadow and it feels three dimensional. Now, right now it's got pretty much a matte surface. There's no reflectivity, right? So if we want to indicate some kind of metallic or chrome or glossy surface, we need to imply a reflection of the environment that it's in. Now this is just going to be a random reflection of an environment, implying some kind of horizon line in the distance. We can kind of have a bend depending on the angle of the camera. But notice just by doing that, you can zoom out and say, yeah, it kind of starts to feel a little bit metallic. And I could even put a reflection of the light source over here, the little glow on it, and suddenly it's a bit metallic. You could even have a bit of a bounce coming from the bottom. Yeah, cool. So keeping that in mind, there's different degrees of reflectivity. So I can lower the opacity on that to go back towards more of a matte surface. And I can even introduce a bump texture by taking all of this, putting a mask on it, and using a textured scatter brush to kind of bring that original ball back, kind of like this. So now that's indicating some kind of rubber material, right? So there's a lot of ways to go about it. Now with carbon fiber, let's go ahead and make this flattened and I'm going to reduce the saturation. Control U, bring this down like that, hit okay. We're going to have to make a separate texture for carbon fiber. You can kind of make up your own pattern, but we can say that it has some kind of crisscrossing effect. I'm gonna pull up some reference in a moment. Yeah, it seems like it's a pattern where you have a strip of something that fades out and it seems to be copied over this over and over again. And when you zoom out, it'll have that kind of carbon fiber pattern that we're all so used to seeing. So I'm going to go ahead and make a cleaner version of this. All right, now we have that pattern that we can kind of repeat over and over again. And it's just a simple gradient rotated in a rectangle. Now, of course, for a variety, what you can do is make a new layer, clip that right in and grab an airbrush, paint a little bit so that it looks like it has more of a variance and then erase out in certain areas. And there you have it. So I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of this for later. And what we're going to try to do is indicate this carbon fiber texture on that sphere. So first what I'll do is hold alt between these two layers, the sphere and the texture itself and click between it. Now it's going to be a clipping layer into the layer below it. And if I set that to overlay, let's see how that looks. Yeah, it's almost there has an interesting effect. We can lower the opacity and then you can go through the layer menu. There's multiply, that looks pretty good. There's color burn, that looks pretty convincing for carbon fiber. Linear burn, and you could probably do a mix of them depending on the lighting scenario that you have. Let's go with multiply. Uh, the problem is it's not conforming to the geometry of the sphere. So what you can do here is either press free transform and go to warp and then pull these corners in like that and like this. Press enter, we make it a little bit bigger, and then do it again. Now, of course, it's not perfect the way a 3D program would do it, but it's pretty convincing. And if you notice on this reference over here, it's a carbon fiber pattern with a gloss finish on top of it. So if you do that same thing as we did before to imply some gloss reflectivity of the environment around it, we can kind of sort of get that effect. It's a clipping mask into that layer on top of the carbon fiber. Just gonna use the lasso tool and select any kind of 
horizon line as if you're selecting a horizon for a regular landscape painting and you're going to fill in the sky. You can use white and airbrush and just airbrush from the bottom. And then you can kind of skew the edges upward the way a chrome ball would. I highly recommend checking out Scott Robertson's tutorials and lessons and books on rendering for stuff like this. And now we can sort of put a bit of that on the edges. Okay, now it looks like a glossy sphere with an indicated carbon fiber texture. Now we can actually make it nicer. A new layer within there over the carbon fiber. Set it to multiply. Maybe grab some uh, darker colors and just let it get a little bit darker in certain areas. Maybe lower the opacity on that and we'd be good to go. Now this is just a quick indication rather than a carefully constructed reflection, but it's a good start. And that's the whole point. This is just a indication tutorial. So let's go ahead and go over here uh, to our helmet sketch and see if we can do the same thing with variants of carbon fiber, metal, and glass. Just gonna fill it in real quick, pretty loosely. All right, I want this whole area to be a glass sheet. Let's choose some areas to be metal. Maybe some over here, over there form that was indicated on the sphere using shadows, we're going to do the same thing with this. It's mostly sphere-like, but we have more organic shapes that are going to have different surfaces catching light differently, as well as cylinders like the canister here in the front. All right, so now we have a shadow pass, a very loose one, obviously, on the, the black part that will be carbon fiber, the metal part that will be metal. And now let's just indicate some glass here, which we're going to use some blending modes to, to help us. But what I have in mind is an effect like this. And that's actually something we're gonna save till the end. But at the very least, what we can do is lock the transparency and then select that blue, go a bit dark and indicate the actual form of it. So let's grab that texture we made earlier of just the rotated rectangles at 45 degrees of that gradient. Go ahead and hold Alt and drag it up to our helmet over here. So now it's gonna show up in here and we're probably gonna need a couple of them. We could actually probably just take the sphere we made for this, but let's just try to conform this to the new sketch. And set that to multiply. Ooh, that's, that's juicy. Look at that. All right, so now we're going to need to conform it. Let's start with the top. What you can actually do is put it in perspective by holding control and then bring these corners into place and then right click, go to warp and select the center and just pull it upward. And it kind of smooths and curves right over where you want it to go. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's just the indication. Feels like carbon fiber. I'm gonna lower the opacity a little bit. Very nice. We can even just take that and hold Alt and move it over and see if it feels believable in other spots with its current orientation. And that feels good enough for me. Now I'm gonna to go to the metal layer, probably lower the opacity on that shadow layer a little bit so it's more metallic. And I'm going to paint some highlights and reflections into it so it's a little bit less matte. All right, now we need our gloss layer on the actual carbon fiber. So I'm gonna take a new layer and sort of imagine this head as if it's a sphere, kind of like we did over here, and select that horizon line like so. Actually, let's make it cleaner. Grab the airbrush, select some white, kind of let that go across. You kind of do that in different areas depending on the design. That feels nice and shiny in this area. And I'm gonna go ahead and make a reflection of the light source, kind of like we have here on the sphere. I'm also gonna let that same reflection show up in different areas because there's certain bevels that will also catch that same light source. And just by doing that, it starts to really create that illusion of reflectivity and material indication. All right, so far looking pretty cool. Now let's try to get this colorful metallic effect on our glass. Now the wireframe I want to indicate for the actual glass, it's very important to know that. It's a new layer, make a big rectangle. I'm gonna fill it in with this deep purple over a lot of the transparency. And using the airbrush, I'm going to just start gradating into different colors. Now it seems like it has actually a warmer magenta on the edges here. So let's go up to magenta and just do that with an airbrush on the edges and it goes into that purple and then like a deeper blue. And from there, we're getting into cyan and then green. Okay, I'm gonna emphasize the warmth on the edges here. And press Control T, move it over. I'm gonna lower the opacity so I can see the wireframe underneath. Put it into perspective. And now where we see this bulge here, I'm gonna go ahead and right click, press warp and pull from the center and then go along with that. Cool, now I have some uh, colors and reflections in there. 
And from here, I would actually just probably flatten everything and then just start painting over it to kind of be free with it rather than working on all these layers. All right, so that is a concept helmet with some basic material indication. We have carbon fiber with reflectivity, a bit of metallic blue, metallic silver, with a bit of that kind of fade off to a warmer purple in certain areas. Surely if you set this up like this and spend a lot more time on it, you could obviously refine it to be almost pretty photoreal as if a 3D render made it or it's an actual photo. But yeah, hope that was helpful. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you haven't already, definitely subscribe to the YouTube channel and stay tuned for new videos.